Okay, welcome to a quick presentation on Relative Refractive Index. You should already be familiar with Snell's Law, and if you're not, I recommend you go back and watch the videos I've made on, on, on that. Okay, so Snell's Law essentially uh, tells you that the refractive index of a material is equal to sine of the angle of incidence divided by sine of the angle of refraction, which is also equal to velocity in medium 1 compared to velocity in medium 2. So, for example, you could have a piece of glass, a ray of light comes into that glass, let's just put a normal line on for reference. As the ray of light slows down, it changes direction, and this angle and this angle, the signs of them are related to the velocity in this medium and this medium. The more it slows down, the more the angle changes. Okay, so now let's have a look at um, relative refractive index, or, th or, or think about relative refractive index. Okay, if you work out the refractive index from this medium, let's say it's air to glass, it's going to be different than from going from glass to air. Okay, well, uh, it's going to be basically the inverse. So if you did uh, v1 divided by v2, you'd have to do v2 divided by v1 to get the refractive index from glass to air. So really what we're talking about here is the relative refractive index. Okay. Now if you look it up in a textbook or look it up in an engineering manual, you get given for glass, for oil, for diamond, for all kinds of different materials, you'll get given the absolute refractive index. Okay. And that value, for all intents and purposes, can be treated as though it's light travelling into that material from air to whatever that material is. So you can think of it as the refractive index from, it's really from a vacuum, vacuum, V for vacuum, to that material, let's say it's glass. So someone's done an experiment, they've made a vacuum, they've fired light into a piece of glass, they've measured several values for, for the angle of incidence and refraction, and they've come up with the refractive index. So for crown glass, that usually would be written like this. Refractive index of glass is equal to 1.5. And what it really means is from a vacuum to glass. If you want to know the refractive index from, a gl from glass to a vacuum, you can take this number and just simply say the inverse of it. And that will give you um, the refractive index going from glass to air. Okay. Now it gets a little bit confusing when you have, say, several materials stacked on top of each other, which we'll look at in the next example. Okay, let's say we're interested in uh, glass going from, sorry, light going from glass to oil. Okay, so if I just draw a normal line on here, imagine you have a ray of light coming in like this. Now I know in this example the velocity of um, light in glass and in oil. Okay, now I've simplified things down. I haven't put times 10 to the 8 because these are all ratios and just to keep the um, keep the flow of the video going uh, so 2 times 28 but now let's just stick to 2 meters per second it's easier to talk about um, so it's it's going to speed up all right so if it speeds up it's going to move away from the normal line right so not by much so I've probably drawn it not great but th this angle I'd expect to be a little bit bigger okay what's the refractive index okay that's quite straightforward to do I can just do velocity medium 1 divided by velocity medium 2. So in this case that's going to be 2 divided by 2.25. Okay, and that's 1.125. Alright, so I can get it quite straightforwardly like this. But you're never going to find this in an engineering textbook. It's not going to be something on a lookup table. What you will find is the refractive index, the absolute refractive index of oil and of sorry of oil and of glass okay so you can quickly work that out the absolute refractive index is approximately the same as the refractive index from air to glass light slows down very little going into air compared to a vacuum so it's almost the same as a vacuum that's an assumption we can make all right so um, let's work it out for air to glass it's going to be v1 over v2 it's going to be 
3 times 28 basically, divided by 2 times 28, so the refractive index from air to glass, or the absolute refractive index of glass is 1.5. What about for oil? Again, it will be 3 divided by 2.25, which gets us a value of 1.33. Okay? So, if I have these two values, and I want to know the refractive index going from glass to oil, what can I do? Well, to explain, uh, uh, let's do the, the simplest thing first, okay? Essentially, if I take the absolute refractive index of oil, right? So if I get refractive index of oil, and divide it by the refractive index of glass, right? I will actually get the refractive index going from glass to oil. Now, you can just memorize that and it will save you a lot of trouble and you'll get your answers correct and vice versa if you did refractive index from glass to oil divided by each other you get the refractive index from oil to glass okay now I'm just going to very quickly try to explain why this is the case okay so if you think about this example okay the refractive index of oil is actually going to be equal to um, 3 divided by 2.25. The refractive index of glass is actually going to be equal to 3 divided by 2. So if we divide these two things by each other, let's keep these brackets uh, so we can see what we're doing. To get these on the same line, I can invert the bottom one and, and uh, bring it up to the top so I get 3 over 2.5 multiplied by 2 over 3 and you can see that the 3's will cancel and you end up with 2 over 2.5 okay so 2 over 2.5 is the same as doing 2 over 2.5 here so you can see from if I divide the refractive index of oil by the refractive index of glass I get the refractive index going from glass to oil okay so that is the same as the refractive index going from glass to oil which, if I do the calculation, I've already done it there, 2 divided by, oh no, no, I've already done it, oh I've missed the 2 there, 2 divided by 2.5, so I've already done there, 2 divided by 2.5, messy, 2 divided by 2.5, um, and I get 1.125, let's check that I've done that correctly, refractive index of oil, yes I missed out the 2.25 there. My mistake. Okay, hopefully you've been able to follow this. Alright, so in a second we'll look at an example question. Okay, so I recommend you uh, read this question. It's an AQA exam question, quite a tricky one. It involves critical angle. So again, if you're not familiar with that, I recommend you watch the previous videos to be fully up to speed with that. This is quite complicated altogether, really. Okay, so hopefully you've, you've done that, had a good old go at the question and, and read. Um, let's go through it. Okay, so first question asks you to calculate the angle of refraction. This is the angle of refraction they're talking about. We're going from air to oil, and we're given the absolute refractive indexes of oil and of water. Okay, so since a vacuum and air are almost the same, we can treat this refractive index as though it's just from air to oil. So I'll start with refractive index of oil is equal to sine of the angle of incidence divided by sine of the angle of refraction. Okay, so what numbers do I actually have? I have this one and this one. Again, I need to rearrange it to, uh, to find the missing value, which is this value here. Okay, so uh, subbing my numbers in, I've got 1.47 equals sine 60 over sine r okay so i can do 1.47 i can do uh for brain freeze i can do sine 60 divided by 1.47 which is going to sine r and then when I have the numerical answer for this, 
I have to take the inverse of sine of that numerical answer, and I get an answer of 36 degrees. Okay. Right, so the first bit, quite straightforward. It's the second bit that's quite tricky. Okay. Calculate the critical angle for a ray of light travelling from oil to water. So really, what we need is relative refractive index. We need to know the refractive index from oil to water, or vice versa, depending on how we solve the, the problem. So the first thing I want to do is get the refractive index from oil to water. Okay, so in order to get the refractive index from oil to water, I'm going to do the refractive index of water and divide it by the refractive index of oil. Okay, so refractive index of water is 1.33 divided by the refractive index of oil, 1.47. Okay, and when I do this, I get a value of approximately 0.9, very close to anyway. So now I need to start thinking about what critical angle is. I've got, I've unpicked part of the question, now I need to find, think about critical angle. If I just start with Snell's law, I think it's the best thing to do. Start with Snell's law, looking for sine i over sine, sine r, sorry. Okay, so basically the critical angle is the angle of incidence that produces refraction of 90 degrees. So basically as long as that's 90 and sine i is the angle in the material we're talking about, oil, sine r is the angle of uh, refraction in the second material, we're fine. Okay, so I want, I've got, angle, I've got the um, refractive index from oil to water, 0.9. Uh, it should be equal to sine angle of instance, which is also going to be the critical angle, divided by sine 90. Sine 90 is actually equal to 1, so I can rewrite this as 0 0.9 equals sine IC over 1. Okay, get sine IC on its own, multiply both sides by 1, so it's 0 0.9 equals sine IC. Angle, uh, IC being critical angle, okay? Take inverse sine of both sides, gets rid of the sine on this side, so sine to the minus 1 of that. Okay, sine to the minus 1 of 0.9 gets me an angle of 64.8 degrees, which is the critical angle. Okay, right, I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments or suggestions for improvements, apart from not being dyslexic, uh, please make them. Thanks for watching.